Senator John Cornyn of Texas is wasting no time in his bid to succeed Republican leader Mitch McConnell. He made it official this morning, saying he thinks the Senate is broken and he, quote, intends to play a major role in fixing it. Cornyn is one of three clear frontrunners for the job, all of them, interestingly, named John. But some of the newer and younger senators in the Republican Party there say that they're eager for a break from the past. Listen to Josh Hawley with Manu Raju this morning. How much do you want to see a break from Mitch McConnell? Total break. Yep. What does that I mean? mean? Well, it means an end to the machine politics that have dominated the Senate in his tenure. It means an end to the corporate money that he has turned on like a geyser that has flowed into the Senate, it's flowed into, frankly, the Republican Party. Joining me now to talk about all of this and much more for fellas who know a thing or two about Republican politics, especially Mitch McConnell, the hosts of the Ruthless podcast, Josh Holmes, John Ashbrook, Michael Duncan, and the man you will see here with his sunglasses on, known as Comfor <laughs> Comfortably Smug. Uh, we're going to get to that whole situation in a second. Uh, Josh, I want to start with you. Uh, I know you were eager to respond to... Um, to, to Josh Hawley, and I should sort of set the table by saying um, all of you, most of you, are very close with Mitch McConnell, have worked for Mitch McConnell, you, are, you especially, Josh. Correct. No, um, I have. I thought it was a sort of a classless response in many ways. Um, look, Josh Hawley is one of the many members of the United States Senate that basically wouldn't be there without the efforts of Mitch McConnell. I find it particularly interesting. Smug and I were talking about this. Uh, earlier today, yeah, where I mean, well, the largest spender in Hawley's previous election was SLF, the McConnell <laughs> Super PAC, which spent $21 million to elect Josh Hawley. So, yeah, so that machine politics worked pretty well for him, uh, evidently, but now it's problematic. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It, let's just talk for a second about Senator McConnell. And his, his speech happened at this time, as we were talking right now yesterday. Uh, and it was pretty, pretty remarkable, uh, the, the kinds of things that he uh, was saying. One of the many wonderful lines that he gave that were very Mitch McConnell uh, was this. Let's listen. Believe me, I know the politics within my party at this particular moment in time. I have many faults. Misunderstanding politics is not one of them. I mean, the, the, the difficult thing about working for a guy like Mitch McConnell is when you work on his campaign, he's the chief strategist. Um, this is a man who has studied politics from a very young age. If you ever read his book, uh, he talks about his old race for student council right. and holding grudges with a guy for 30 years because he voted against him. Um, so no, I mean, I don't think anybody's confused about whether Mitch McConnell understands politics. Well, and, and the point he was trying to make, and you guys, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that if you look at the big issues that he's working on now or has worked on just this Congress, right now he's pushing for Ukraine aid. Uh, he helped to get through uh, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. He tried and failed to get a, an immigration bill done. That's not where the base of his party is. And so is that part of him saying, I'm, I'm out of here? Or, I mean, I know that there are a lot of factors, but that's kind of the point he was trying to make there. I don't know, Dana, you, you worked up there for a really long time, mm -hmm. so you know as well as anybody that the idea that there's actually a leader in the Senate is a little bit of a misnomer. I think this is one of the things that is really the secret to his success is he understands the place better than anybody else. You have 100 people who look in the mirror and see a president looking back at them. <laughs> and one of the jokes that McConnell always made is that he felt like he was the caretaker, the, or the groundskeeper at a graveyard, that everybody was under him, but nobody was listening. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of truth in that statement. And I think that his understanding of the chamber and his understanding of the members and what they want was really the key to his longevity. Yeah, if I could add, Dan. Yeah, please. So what he was talking about very specifically in that was a reflection of how he came about during the Reagan revolution and this idea that the inextricable link to America being the leader of the free world was something that he still deeply believes in. And so when he was talking about the politics, he was very specifically talking about that national security aid package that he'd worked so hard to try to get across the finish line, despite some in his party having grave reservations about Ukraine and everything else. And so I think it's very specifically... See, to the world stage. To, to the America's world stage. role in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know. Well, I mean, I think also just tying all of this together is this is a very long legacy. 
He's been doing a tremendous amount of work for a very long time. I saw a journalist tweet the other day that if Chuck Schumer had confirmed three Supreme Court justices, they named the island of Manhattan after him. <laughs> and I think so much of our politics now is just in the, in the second, in the moment, that folks forget how many Republicans were cheering when we got three uh, Supreme Court justices in four years. That was a tremendous accomplishment. What about this whole idea of a magnified Senate? That um, Josh Hawley, he might have gotten the help of, of Mitch McConnell. He did get the help of Mitch McConnell and Mitch McConnell's allies to get elected. But people like him are very much in line with and eager to please Donald Trump and his and his base. And that wasn't the case not that long ago in the Senate. That was the House. The Senate was different, not anymore. Yeah, you know, I find that leadership elections, if you're trying to figure out who's winning and who's losing, you don't listen to the people who are talking all the time. Mm -hmm. What you do is find the rest of them that are not, because the truth is there's about nine in the Senate currently that have had a lot to say about direction of leadership, direction of the Senate, where the Senate is. And then there's, you know, 40 others mm -hmm. that are sitting around, you know, thinking about this meeting with the John Cornyns and Barrasso's and Thunes and trying to figure out what's best for this conference going forward. And so, look, I think it's going to play out over a period of time. There's no question that the president has influence within the party. I mean, he's going to be the nominee of the party. But I think in terms of how you actually elect a Republican leader of the Senate, a little bit more inside baseball than that. What do you guys think? Who's got the upper hand? Which of the Johns? Oh, gosh. Well, we have a John ourselves. Maybe yeah. we put it <laughs> I think it's... I think unlike the speaker, you actually have to be a senator. To be yeah, right. <laughs> it's, just, it's way too early to know. I mean, it's way too... And there, there's also talk about maybe another person emerging oh, later yeah? on in the game, that, you know, player yeah. to be named later. So it is just so early to know. Cornyn's the only guy who's officially announced yeah. at this point. But you know that these games are played out on the inside level. And, mm -hmm. and here's the other thing. Republicans have not had this sort of situation for a long time. You remember 17 years. Yeah, you remember 2007. Uh -huh. And it was a little bit more chaotic than it is today. And I think that we're sort of edging into a brand new time for a lot of people who weren't there in 07. I think it, it's chaotic now. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you ain't seen nothing. Oh, fantastic. <laughs>